What's up everyone, today I have Nintendo Box, Ashley Akana, Hylian Bandicoots, RMFH Gaming, and McIntyre Productions. We're all here to discuss one topic, The Legend of Zelda Wii U, more specifically DLC for Zelda Wii U, and Nintendo's DLC strategy with Splatoon. When Splatoon was launched, it felt like an incomplete game, very fun, but still incomplete. Nintendo released the game with limited maps and weapons, and over the following weeks they trinkled out free DLC for the game, making it feel more like you were getting your money's worth. In the future, could Nintendo reuse this exact same strategy with other franchises that they own? My question is, what if Nintendo did this for Zelda Wii U? I know your immediate thoughts are negative, but hear me out. Majora's Mask was developed in a little over a year under an agreement between Aonuma and Miyamoto, and it's still considered one of the best games in the franchise, even though it only has four traditional dungeons, which many people would say is the main point of a Zelda game. Nintendo's next console game, Wind Waker, was rushed to meet its deadline, and because of this we were left with a time-consuming Triforce quest and entire dungeons that were completely scrapped. In Hyrule Historia, we can even see concept art for adult Toon Link. So who knows what Wind Waker could have been if given the time that it needed to be fully complete. The same thing happened for Ocarina of Time's expansion on the Nintendo 64 disk drive. Even though these games were rushed and entire dungeons were left out, they're still considered fan favorites. Skyward Sword had the longest development time of any Zelda game. It had more than enough time to be completed and was even delayed, but to hardcore Zelda fans, Many think it's the worst in the series, and Twilight Princess, which has the second longest development time, even though it has one of the largest overworlds seen in a Zelda game, many people didn't like it because the overworld was just completely empty. So would it be such a bad idea for Nintendo to launch Zelda Wii U with missing dungeons, just as Wind Waker was, and over the course of the next few months or even a year, add in those dungeons via free DLC similar to how maps and weapons were added to Splatoon? For example, say the complete game has around 10 dungeons. It releases with 7, and once a month Nintendo releases another dungeon, another weapon, and another part of the story. In a similar example, Mario games usually launch with 8 worlds. Let's say a new Mario game comes out with 5 worlds, and over the next 3 months, Nintendo releases the completed worlds. What are your thoughts on this? Is it acceptable? I mean, could you see yourself paying the full $60 for an incomplete game? And if not, why was everyone completely fine with them doing it for Splatoon? Yeah, personally, I don't think that it would work with what Zelda is, really. I think Splatoon kind of... I think it's an interesting idea, certainly. And it would make it a lot easier for them to uh, get a Zelda game out quite quickly. And that's something that would look good on um, the portfolio of the system. But I don't think it lends itself that well to what Zelda is. Whereas Splatoon kind of does. It got a lot of stick for it still with Splatoon. But it would get a lot more, I think, if it was Zelda. Because with Splatoon, it's a multiplayer game. They often get... Yeah, especially multiplayer shooters, they often get updates, uh, adding new content, whether it be paid or free. So that kind of worked with that, whereas Zelda... Now, I'm sure it isn't story-driven a lot, but it is one of those big, expansive games, generally. And um, I just don't think that people would like having to wait for that game. Make it kind of like an episodic game, I guess, almost. And uh, certainly I don't like episodic games, and I know that a lot of people would not like that. There'd be a lot of backlash, I think, certainly. I just want to start off by saying that I didn't pick up Splatoon when it first came out, and I still haven't jumped on the bandwagon with that. I know I'm kind of lagging here. But uh, from what I understand, basically what they did is release DLC week by week after the game came out, and the game wasn't initially finished when it first came out. You know, they had a few levels here and there, and then they added DLC as the weeks went on. One thing I don't know is if that DLC was free or paid for. Uh, you guys probably know a lot more about that than I do, but if they were going to do this to Zelda Wii U and release the game unfinished with a couple dungeons mis missing and, and whatnot, I would kind of have a problem with that, to be honest. Uh, Nintendo has made this name for themselves where they complete a game when they make a game. I mean, Splatoon might be one of the you know, exceptions, but when it comes to most titles, they complete the game. I mean, Mario Kart and all that type of stuff, Smash and all that, 
didn't start getting DLC until this generation console. I don't need, I don't remember personally remember if it, they got any DLC for the Wii version. They could have very well could have. I could be completely wrong here, but those types of games didn't get DLC back in the day, from my understanding. Um. But now they're starting to get DLC. So Nintendo's starting to experiment with all this type of stuff. But they have made a name for themselves where they do not release a game unfinished. And that's why they take so long. That's why Zelda Wii U is taking so long to make. They don't want to release it unfinished. But if they were to do that, I think they would make a lot of people mad. I mean, that's just a thing that people expect out of them nowadays. And that's something that I personally expect out of them, especially with the Zelda title. Like, yeah, if it's going to add to the game, no biggie. No biggie at all. Like, uh, Triforce Heroes, they're coming out with new DLC for that game. And they're going to add a ton of new dungeons and all that type of stuff. I'm perfectly fine with that. That's cool. That's awesome. But when the game came out, it was complete, finished. They got the storyline all synced in and, and tightened up. And they got, you know all of the dungeons readily available for you. <clears throat> now, then we go into if it's going to cost money for you or not, you know. If it if it's going to cost me money to go out and get DLC for a game that I just paid 60 bucks for through Nintendo and I kind of expected it to be a finished game and it's going to, you know, charge me or Nintendo's going to charge me to get this extra DLC for The Legend of Zelda that has to do with the storyline, unless it adds to that storyline, I'd be a bit salty. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. That wouldn't go over very well with myself, and honestly, I I don't know. It, it would make me feel the same way that I feel with every other AAA title that comes out nowadays, because everybody does it. I mean, Call of Duty does it. I just bought Call of Duty 3, and the game when you first buy it they want you to buy the season pass which is another 50 bucks i mean you're going out and spending 115 dollars on a game i mean we most of us here grew up in the 90s i believe and you know you go out and buy a game in the 90s and that game was complete there was no added stuff and if there was added stuff you know it would it would come with the regular game that they would just up the price of the game a little bit uh so me personally, being a 90s kid, I like all of this stuff bothers me. I, I can't I can't do the whole like the DLC thing kills me when it comes to if a game's completed or not. Like uh, Dead Space 3 is a very, very good example of this. They wouldn't release Dead Space 3 and that game was just cruddy. The storyline, the way they left it, cliffhanger, like it was just cruddy. And then they came out with the DLC that I, I believe you had to pay for. And it finished up the storyline, and it, it honestly, being a Dead Space fan, it disap it made me very disappointed, very disappointed that I had to go and spend another fifteen to twenty dollars on a game that I already paid full price for just to get the the actual ending to the damn game. Now, with that all put aside, if you're comp you know, if you're gonna, if we're gonna be referencing these two games, it. it Honestly, it's a little hard because Splatoon's a, you know, shooter game. It, it's it's more along the lines of, you know, Halo or Call of Duty in that type of sense. And they can go ahead and release DLC for that game and it's not going to affect the storyline. Like with, with Call of Duty, they have, you know, when they release their their DLC, it's, it's map packs and new guns that come out and stuff like that. And same thing with Splatoon, I'm sure. Uh, with Zelda Wii U... It would just be a little weird it like okay let's say they take a couple dungeons out of the game to make it come out faster and those two dungeons have to do heavily with you know certain items that you need to progress in the storyline or certain items that you need to uh, do certain quests that are in the in the game itself you know you wouldn't be able to get those right away because of the, the DLC you'd have to wait for the DLC um, now if it came out week by week, I guess that'd be okay. And I'm personally, I want them to release Zelda Wii U as soon as possible because we've been waiting so long for it. But I'm not one to get very upset when it comes to a 
delaying a game. Yeah, I'll be upset, but I'm not going to stop buying the game or, you know, totally lose faith in the franchise or whatever because of the fact that they're delaying it so much. I'd rather it be fully complete, polished, and one of the most epic games I've ever played in my life than have them release DLC, you know, week by week or even, you know, altogether. I just don't agree with it. I, I don't think that it would be a good idea for them to make that move. I think they would make a lot of Zelda fans unhappy and it, to me personally, it's just a bad idea. It's a bad idea. The game doesn't mix very well with that type of stuff. And, you know, if we look at uh, Fallout 4, for instance, that just came out. And, you know, that's kind of a similar game. You go out and explore and, you know, mostly do whatever you want. And they're trying to do that. I mean, they, you know, the creators looked at Skyrim, for instance, and wanted to make the game more like that kind of RPG. And they... If they're going to go and add DLC, I'd rather them do it the way Fallout does it or uh, the way Bethesda does it. You know, they'll release a game, it's fully completed, all that type of stuff, and then they'll add DLC that adds to the storyline later on or adds a completely new storyline. That would be awesome. You know, if you're going through the game and let's say Zelda Wii U, you get a DLC pack that lets you go into Termina, for instance. Uh, that would be freaking awesome. I'd love it. I'd buy the crap out of it. I'd buy every DLC they came out with. But if Termina is a part of the game that is very pivotal, then I'd be a little mad that I'd have to sit there and wait for that DLC and pay extra money just to progress in my storyline. But, you know, I'm going in circles here, so let's just move on. Thanks for having me on, Jesse. What I believe is that Nintendo EAD Group Number 3 should use the same tactic Intelligent Systems is doing for Fire Emblem Fates, where they release a full story, but the DLC should include an extra storyline since, you know, after you complete the story there's pretty much nothing to do except be a completionist and grab the last of the steps you, that you missed out on. After the story is completed, the replay value in Zelda titles plummets to zero, and it is an issue that Nintendo has never addressed before, and since Nintendo wants to make this the perfect Zelda experience, upping the replay value is the best way to raise the awesome value to over 9,000. DLC is something that shouldn't be taken very light, and so Eiji Numa needs to be careful in how he will handle this. Well, in terms of Zelda Wii U, um, really, Anuma and Miyamoto are perfectionists. They always have been, in which they treat um, their particular projects as artwork, and they want to. Uh, install it towards a highest peak of quality assurance and that's really the, I would say the main concern of why Zelda's at least for the past two ones have been released at the let's say the ending of the life cycle of let's say the Wii for Skyward Sword and Zelda Wii U for the Wii U is because they focus so much on the quality of the games that it's kind of detrimental for the console it's been on since it takes such a long time to develop these games. I think Zelda Wii U, once it's released, or assuming it's releasing in 2016, has somewhere around like six or seven years of development, and that's very long. Um, and so, uh, um, Anuma and Miyamoto are perfectionists in that end, which can be a good or bad thing. It's good for the games, I, I don't think it'd be good for the, uh, the console. Um, Right now, Zelda Wii U, it could be one of the greatest games ever created, but will it help the Wii U? Uh, since it's pretty much releasing at such a, uh, um, at the end of the life cycle for the Wii U, I'm not really sure what's good for the console. If Zelda Wii U, let's, let's say, was a launch title for the Wii U and begin with, I'm pretty sure that would rev the console up, um, but that's going to give it a minuscule amount of development time. So I would definitely uh, recommend Nintendo to try to more, uh, schedule they, their time and pace their games and which that could be maybe they have done it in the past but hasn't worked so well for them so but i would definitely like to see them pump out more games but also keep that quality assurance but that's a tall order in itself hello ladies and gentlemen ethan from hillian bandicoot's giving my thoughts on um splatoon's dlc situation and how that would fur in the world of mario and zelda so my thoughts on splatoon um in comparison to Zelda and Mario is the big difference for me is the fact that Splatoon is an online game um, and it's very important that you keep that online community um, active 
So if you look at Zelda and Mario, both games series are amazing, um, but they're both sort of single player experiences. So once you've played through a Zelda game, you know, say you've put 50 hours into Skyward Sword, 100 percent of it, you then put it to the side and you don't go back to it that much. Um, and same with Mario for me, you know, I put 30 hours into the new Mario game, like, I don't know, Super New Super Mario Bros. 2, I put 30, 30 hours into that game, 100 percent of it, and never really went back to it. I obviously will go back to games like Ocarina of Time, you know, my favourites, and replay them, um, but I don't consistently go back to those games like I do with a game like TF2 or Splatoon, and that's why the DLC is, is good. Um, what they did with the DLC for Splatoon um, is similar to what they did with Mario Kart 8 where with Mario Kart 8 the best the great thing about it was there was the the game released early 2014 um, and then you had the DLC um, late 2014 which sort of uh, injected it with um, this sort of adrenaline boost and got everyone playing it back again got the online community back again and the same happened again with the Animal Crossing update uh, earlier this year um, and that's what they've done with Splatoon because if they had released every bit of Splatoon content right off the bat and had the full game released, um, yeah there would have been more content, yeah it would have been more fun, but the community would have died down by now in my opinion a lot more. So having these tiny little injections keep people going back and back and back to the game and considering the primary, um, you know, the primary like gameplay of that is online you know that's something that's really important because the thing about that's the difference between Splatoon and Mario Kart is Mario Kart 8 was a full game when it was released um, whereas Splatoon people argue that the game wasn't full um, but with Mario Kart 8 it's also a single player uh, experience as well a great single player experience and also with Mario Kart 8 they couldn't really afford to just give you four cups and then release them periodically over time because then people would complain because of obviously Mario Kart's heritage it's always had at least eight cups um, so adding that DLC as extra content after they've already released a full game is what they needed to do for Mario Kart but with Splatoon having this sort of season pass style thing where you bought the game then you just keep periodically getting more and more stuff is awesome to be honest um, I have no complaints about that at all because it does keep people going back to the game and that's one of the most important things about online and at the end of the day if all of the stuff had come out when the game was released you know I highly doubt people would be talking about it as much um, as they still do because every time a new Splatoon updates out you know there's a wave of tweets loads of people going back to playing the game you know also the Splatfest as well like it's all about keeping people coming back to the game and keeping the online fresh and um, exciting so that's why um, that's why I think that's a good model, but I don't think it would work for single player games because, you know, they don't really have any need to keep going, like, keep you going back to the game because it's a single player experience, you enjoy it, and so once you finish the game, that's it. So with, like, Mario, the idea of Mario perhaps having six worlds to start with and then another two worlds coming periodically, I don't really see the point in that at all. You know, Miyamoto says, and I'm paraphrasing here, but, you know, a rushed game is bad forever so you know it's better for a game to be late and amazing than rushed and be good uh, rushed and be bad sorry so with Mario you know they would just delay the game and finish the worlds so there's no there was no really no need to do that because if it's a single player experience so it, you know it's different um, but I think it's a very smart move for an online game and with regard to um, the Wind Waker uh, DLC idea Obviously, Wind Waker had um, they scrapped a few dungeons to meet the release date. Um, I don't think that's going to happen with Zelda Wii U um, because, and I don't think it's a good idea for Zelda Wii U because obviously, with the same idea, you know, if they released um, Zelda Wii U and then released the DLC like months after, because obviously they can do that now. At the time of Wind Waker, they couldn't really do that, but they could probably do that now. Um, I don't think that's a good idea just because. Um, the game's a single player story experience and if you complete the game 100% when it comes out and then a few months down the line you've got new dungeons, it would be cool but um, it sort of breaks up the, the experience and sort of draws you out of the world really. Um, I'd like to have the whole game there and just experience it for myself um, in one 
sitting, not sitting, obviously, I don't want to be sat for like 60 hours playing the game, but for what, like, you know, one experience. I don't want to be going back a few months down the line for new shit. I'd rather have the full game and enjoy it. And, um, you know, Nintendo don't rush the games, really. Um, and also, they they delayed Zelda Wii U. It was supposed to be coming this year, and it's not now. It's going to be coming in 2016, which I was very surprised about. Um, but, you know, they've delayed the game for good reason. They're going to add more stuff into it. I don't think it's... I think when it releases, it's going to be a full game, and it's not going to have periodic um, installments. So with Mario games and Zelda games, I think launching as full games is what they're going to do, I don't think um, they're going to follow the Splatoon sort of format in future, but with online games, definitely, I think that is you know, a great idea because it keeps people coming back to the game um, stuff like Mario Maker as well um, is sort of an exception because Mario Maker I would regard as a main series Mario title um, but obviously this like sort of customization um, options within the game um, they could you know, add on to that periodically or sell them as DLC packs. Um, the difference being with that and Splatoon is that Mario Maker feels like a full game again as well, whereas Splatoon didn't really feel like a full game on release. But yeah, it's a great idea from Nintendo, the online thing, I love it. Um, but it wouldn't work with um, Zelda or Mario, in my opinion, because the single player experiences are not multiplayer. Thank you.